Out of every 10 people, it's estimated that roughly 8 of them will experience lower back pain at some point in their lives. Now although lower back pain can stem from numerous factors, multiple reviews and case studies have found that people with lower back pain often tend to have issues with lower back strength and neuromuscular control, and that improving their strength and coordination of their lower back seems to be an effective intervention to prevent and reduce the pain that they experience. And what's interesting is that research indicates that even well-trained individuals who regularly train in the gym seem to have this lower back imbalance as well, which is thought to be due to a lack of lower back specific exercises within their training routines, meaning that including exercises that specifically target and strengthen the lower back into your current routine will be beneficial not only to potentially prevent and reduce lower back pain itself, but to also minimize the risk of you developing lower back weaknesses or imbalances over time. But unfortunately, most people who attempt to do so go about doing it the wrong way and either end up choosing the wrong exercises or they'll implement and perform them in the wrong way, which all just worsens the situation. Take a look at the commonly performed Superman exercise, for example, where both the arms and legs move into extension. Although this does activate the lower back muscles quite well, research by Dr. Stuart McGill at the University of Waterloo has actually found that it also causes roughly 6,000 thousand newtons of spinal compression. And given that the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health actually recommends the lower limit of spinal compression to be just 3,300 newtons, we can clearly see how a commonly performed lower back exercise like the Superman can actually worsen the issue by creating a ton of excessive compression on the spine. In this video though, I'll clear everything up for you and show you how to properly and safely strengthen your lower back with a full routine that you can implement right away. First off, before diving into the lower back specific exercises, we need to cover two compound exercises that should ideally make up the bulk of your lower back training, squats and deadlifts. Because these two exercises, especially deadlifts, have been shown in multiple papers to elicit very high activity of the lower back muscles, simply meaning that free weight squats and deadlifts should definitely be a staple in your weekly routine given that they have not only been shown to be highly effective for lower back strength and hypertrophy, but also because they are easy to overload with weight in order to continue adequately challenging the lower back muscles over time. With that being said though, there are a few problems with squats and deadlifts, which may even explain why we still see lower back weaknesses and imbalances in individuals that perform them regularly. First off, let's just face it, not everybody does them. Secondly though, we know that the heavier you go with these exercises, the greater the activation of the lower back muscles. But the truth is that a lot of people don't perform these relatively heavy enough to actually provide enough stimulus to their lower back. And lastly, for those that do perform them and may go heavy enough with them, multiple studies have also indicated that without proper stabilization of the pelvis, the much larger and stronger hamstring and glutes often tend to take over and do most of the back extension work instead. Result resulting in less stimulus and less strengthening of the lower back muscles themselves. Therefore, to fill in this missing gap, you want to incorporate the next two lower back exercises. The first exercise, back extensions, does this perfectly by stabilizing the pelvis such that the lower back can be better activated and strengthened to a much greater degree than other exercises, which has been consistently shown to do in the literature. However, despite the effectiveness and popularity of this exercise, most people don't perform it in a way that safely works and strengthens the lower back muscles and instead just worsens the problem. So to properly execute it, you'll want to do the following steps, which I'm going to demonstrate on a glued ham raise, but the exact same tips apply to the Roman chair back extension as well. First, you need to set up correctly by positioning your pelvis at the top of the pad or just past it. Then, simply lower yourself down to the bottom position while keeping a neutral spine. And then ascend back up by using your lower back muscles until your torso is in line with your legs. But avoid going past this point into hyperextension, as this causes more and more spinal compression the further back you go. Instead, keep your spine neutral throughout the movement and stop before you go into hyperextension. Positioning the pad too far forward, which most people do, is just going to cause your back to excessively round as you descend. 
And for this exercise, you want to start out with a rep range of roughly 8 to 15 reps with your body weight. And then over time, as your lower back strengthens and you can perform 15 reps easily, you can continue overloading the movement by holding onto a weight or dumbbells as you perform it. Now, in addition to the previous exercise, you want to also include an exercise that challenges your stability to a greater degree. Because as found in a paper from the Australian journal Physiotherapy, although high loading of the back extensors as we've previously done is an ideal way to strengthen them, an additional exercise that demands more stability from the lower back is required in order to selectively emphasize individual muscles that play a greater role in stabilizing the lower back, like the multifidus shown here for example. This is especially important since many people with lower back pain actually do have strong backs but instead they lack proper coordination and stability of their lower back. And an effective way to improve this is by using the bird dog exercise shown here. Not only does this exercise elicit greater activation of the various stabilizer muscles in the lower back, but it's also been shown to do so with minimal spinal compression. In fact, going back to Dr. Stuart McGill's research, compared to the Superman exercise, this exercise brought out a much safer 2000 newtons of force on the lower back. But again, it's vital that you perform it correctly. And to do so, you'll want to first get on all fours with your hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips, and your back in a naturally slightly arched position. From here, brace your core and reach with one arm all the way in front of you while simultaneously kicking back with your opposite leg until they're both straight. As you do so, push with your support hand down into the floor so that your upper back pushes off the floor slightly. Hold this top position for 5 seconds or so before returning to the start position and repeating with the other arm and leg. And you want to avoid raising your arms and legs too high as this is just going to cause your lower back to excessively arch. Instead, raise them until they're parallel with your body and focus on keeping your back neutral throughout the movement. If this version is too difficult for you though, to start out you can easily easily regress the exercise by reaching out with just an arm reach. And then you want to progress to a leg reach. And then finally, you can progress to both the arm and leg reach. And as for reps, I'd use Dr. Stuart McGill's recommendation of using a descending pyramid, such that you start with 8 reps aside for the first set, go down to 6 for the second set, and then down to 4 reps for the final set. And over time, you'll want to focus on increasing the length of the holds at the top until you're able to hold for roughly 10 seconds or so each rep. Now to sum this all up into a weekly routine for you, here's what I'd recommend. Meant. So based on research on the training frequency and volume of the lower back, you actually don't need much at all to see significant improvements in strength and you definitely don't want to overdo it. In fact, multiple studies have shown that even for well-trained individuals, adding in just one lower back exercise one to two times per week was able to quickly and significantly increase their lower back strength. Therefore, what I'd suggest is that if you're currently able to free weight squat and deadlift weekly, then you You'd likely just need to throw in the following two exercises once per week for a few sets each and just overload them as you get stronger. Whereas if you're unable to do free weight squats and deadlifts or you just don't go very heavy with them, you can opt to do these more often. Regardless of how you set it up though guys, by including these exercises in some fashion within your current regimen, you'll be able to significantly boost your lower back strength, potentially reduce your lower back pain, and minimize the risk of you developing lower back weaknesses or imbalances over time. But at the same time, you need to be sure that you're not unknowingly overlooking other areas of your body as well. And that's exactly why within my Built With Science programs, we've taken the time to carefully select each and every exercise included in your weekly training routines such that you can build muscle and lean down while actually improving your posture and correcting your muscle imbalances in the process just like countless other members have successfully done with their Built With Science programs. And if I know which science-based program is best for you and your specific body, simply head on over to builtwithscience.com and take the starting point quiz. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please do me a favor and give the video a like. Leave a comment down below as to what you'd like to see me cover next. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications for the channel as well as this all really does help me out. Thank you all so much for the continued support and I'll see you next time.